Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting leak code problem that combines subarrays and bitwise operations. It's called smallest subarrays with maximum bitwise OR. Don't worry if that sounds like a mouthful. We're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. Okay, here's the official problem statement. The main idea is this. We're given a list of numbers. For every single starting position in that list, we need to find the shortest possible group of consecutive numbers that gives us the best possible result from a bitwise OR operation. Let's unpack what that really means. So it's really a two-part question for every spot in the array. First, what's the best score we can even get? And second, what's the quickest way to get that score? The answer we need to give is the length of that quickest way. Let's think about this maximum possible OR part. The bitwise OR operation is a bit like collecting unique items. Once a bit is turned on, it stays on. So as we make our subarray longer by adding more numbers, the total OR value can only get bigger or stay the same. It can never shrink. This tells us something really important. The absolute best OR value we can get, starting from some index i, is what we'd get if we just OR ed together everything from that spot all the way to the end of the list. Okay, let's walk through an example to make this concrete. Say our list is 1, 0, 2, 1, 3 and we're trying to figure out the answer for the very first element at index zero. First step, find the maximum possible OR. That's 1 OR 0, OR, 2 OR, 1 OR 3, which all combines to give us 3. In binary, 3 is 0 1 1. Now for the second step, find the shortest subarray starting at the beginning that gets us to 3. The first number is 1. Its OR is just 1. Not there yet. Let's add the next number, 0. 1 O R 0 is still just 1. No good. Let's add the next number. 2. 1 O R 0. O R 2. That gives us 3. Perfect. We've hit our target. The length of this subarray is 3. So the first value in our answer is 3. Doing that little walkthrough for every single starting spot would be way too slow. There must be a better way. The big aha moment for this problem is to work backwards. Instead of starting from the beginning of the list, let's start from the end and move left. Why would we do that? Because when we're at some position i, by working backwards, we've already seen everything to its right. This means we already have a complete picture of all the bits that are available in the rest of the array. We can use that future knowledge to make a smart decision right now. So how do we use that future knowledge? We'll create a little helper list, let's call it POS, for positions. This list will have about 31 spots one for each bit in a standard integer. The value we store at each spot will be the index where we last saw that particular bit. As we scan the array from right to left, we'll constantly update this map. It's like leaving breadcrumbs for ourselves. Here is the complete Python code that implements this idea. It might look a bit dense at first, but it follows our strategy exactly. We're going to loop backwards, and for each number, we'll use our POS map to figure out how far we need to look to our right. Let's break it down piece by piece. First, we set things up. We create our position map, POS, and fill it with a placeholder like negative one, because we haven't seen any bits yet. We also create our answer list. Then, we kick off the most important part, the loop that starts at the last index of the input list, and moves backwards, one step at a time. Inside our main loop, we have another small loop that checks every possible bit, from bit 0, up to bit 30. Let's look at the simple case first. If the current number we're looking at, let's call it the number at i, actually has a certain bit turned on, we update our pious map. We say, hey map, the most recent place I've seen this bit is right here, at index i. Now for the interesting part. We start by assuming our subarray just contains the current number at i ticks. So its rightmost boundary, which we'll call j, is also just i. But what if the number at i is missing a bit that we know is available later in the array? Well, our pose map tells us exactly where to find it. If a bit is missing, we look at our map. The map tells us the index of the nearest number to our right that has that bit. So our subarray must stretch, at least that far. We update our boundary j to be the farthest of all these required positions. After we've checked all 31 bits for the current number at i, our variable j will hold the perfect answer. It represents the smallest possible ending index for our subarray that guarantees we get the maximum possible OR value. The length is just the distance between the end j and the start i. We calculate that length, store it in our results, and then the loop moves one step to the left to do it all over again for the previous index. So how efficient is this approach? 
For time complexity, we have one main loop that goes through our list of n numbers. Inside that loop we do a constant amount of work, checking about 31 bits, so the total time is proportional to n. We call this big O of n. For space, the only extra memory we use is that POS map, which is always a fixed size, so the space complexity is constant, or big O of 1. This is a very fast and efficient solution. So to wrap things up, what are the big ideas here? First, understanding that the bitwise OR value only ever goes up was key to figuring out what our target maximum value was. Second, the trick of processing the array backwards allowed us to make optimal choices. And finally, using a simple helper array to store information about the part of the list we've already seen, which in this case was the future, was the mechanism that made it all work. I hope this breakdown helped make the problem and its solution clearer. If you found this useful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Subscribe for more Leet Code explanations, and feel free to drop any questions or thoughts in the comments below. Keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.